We're going to take a look at some math today. I'm going to be showing you Horizons Math. This is level three. Hi, I'm Jamie, and this is Simply Learning Together. I am a homeschool mom of four, and I love talking about all things homeschool. I especially love talking about curriculum. And one of my favorite things to do when I'm looking for curriculum is I love coming on here to YouTube and seeing videos of people that can actually see inside. And that's what I hope to do here for you. So this video will be kind of a flip through of Horizons 3. We've actually been using Horizons for the last three years. So we started in kinder with my oldest and then we used it in first, second, and now again in third. So we definitely love it for her. Um, we've tried it for another one of my children and it did not work. So it really does depend on your child. I'm going to do my best not to give too much of a review, but I do think some of the information that I have from using this and experience will be helpful. So if you hear little tidbits here and there of my experience, I hope it helps you in that way. Overall, I just want to show you what's inside and what you can expect if you were to purchase this Horizons Math Level 3. Let's start with a little bit about what Horizons is. I usually just purchase mine on Amazon. You can get a box set that comes with book one, book two, and the teacher's guide. Now, I do know they sell these on other websites like christianbook.com, and so you might wanna look for a sale to kind of give it, get it at a better price. Let's take a look at the workbooks. I'm gonna start with book one. I'm gonna flip the first few pages and then I'll probably skip towards the end of book one and then I'll do the same thing in book two. One of the things I like to see when I'm looking at curriculum is how do these lessons progress? What am I doing at the beginning? What am I doing at the middle? And then at the end. And once we look at the two workbooks, I will show you the teacher's guide. This is the beginning of book one. I was looking through this and there is quite a bit of a, of a review. When we were in the second grade book, we were adding and subtracting, I want to say five or six digit numbers and now they're jumping back to two. So this stuff we will probably jump through pretty quickly. However, I did notice that already in lesson seven, they introduced a new skill. So they kind of build their way to it. And then in lesson seven, we kind of start the estimation. Normally, when I work through these workbook pages with my daughter, if she has a skill down, if she knows it pretty well, we'll only do two or three problems to review it. I'm not gonna have her do every single one. You know, this to me kind of seems like overkill. So we will usually just do three or four. And that shows me whether or not she still remembers how to do it or if we need to do some more time. Let's just kind of go quickly towards the end and look at the last 10 lessons. Equivalent fractions. We're multiplying two digit numbers here. Once again, these multi step algebraic equations. Here we have division. There are some mapping activities. Here's multiplying three digit numbers. And that is the end of book one. All right, we are in book two now. And we will look a little bit at the beginning and then I'll kind of skip to the end like I did. And the other one. Now here we have um, multiplying and dividing the equations. is multiplying four digits. 
uh, I don't know if you saw that, but mixed numbers is thrown in there. Let's flip to a test. The thing with these tests is you almost miss them. This is a test, test 10, lesson 100, and it's going to test over these lessons before. And the there's also lesson 100 right after that. Now, in the teacher's book, it will kind of put that on the same page, but we've never done that. We've always separated it out. So if you are someone that has to plan out your lessons, just consider that as you are planning out your days. You've got one day for the test and another day for the lesson. All right, so let's kind of jump a little bit. Actually, we'll go this way so you can kind of quickly see while I flip. And let's go to here. We're working with much bigger numbers in the level three. It looks like we are adding max numbers here. Here is a quick look at the teacher guide. I'm not gonna flip through the whole thing. There is a readiness evaluation at the beginning. We have not done that in the past, but I'm just letting you know it is there. And I actually went through this scope and sequence last night, and I don't know if you can see, but I put a little dot next to all of the sections that are new. So for example, they were not covered in the second grade book. Okay. So if you are not familiar with the teacher's guide, the lessons look like this. Uh, it tells you the concepts at the top, the objectives. There's a few teaching tips and the materials and supplies that you need. There is usually something as a review or to start off your lesson. And then you'll notice that in the teacher guide, it says student activity one. That is referring to, if you look at a lesson right here, so number one, and then student activity two would be number two. And it'll give you just a brief explanation on how to introduce it to your child. And it will tell you if they should do it by themselves or with assistance or with help, it, it mentions that as well. At the bottom of the lesson, there are extra worksheets that you can give your child. These are in the back and we have actually never used them. To me, there's already enough problems in the book as it is and we don't even do all of those. I don't see a reason to add even more work to the um, lesson for the day. So you can see, I mean, they're just like lots of practice. And I can just kind of flip through just all the different skills. And like I said, I have never used these before, but they are there if you need extra practice. And the answer keys are behind them. So, I mean, this is what the teacher guide looks like. It is literally just lesson after lesson. Um, telling you the materials you need and what to do for each activity. One of the things that kind of bugs me about these teacher's guides is if I want to look at lesson 13, the answers, then I've got to flip to the back because the answer keys are in the back. So this is the lessons. So I'd have to find it. 
um, to find the answers for the workbook page. So these are all the answer keys for the lessons. I hope looking through that gave you a great idea of what Horizons Math Level 3 looks like. You know, searching for a curriculum can be really tricky. Always remember that you're never going to find the perfect one. I have to remind myself of this often. The thing is, the curriculum is just a guide. You'll have to make it work for you. If you have questions, feel free to leave them in the comments and I will do my best to answer them. If you are still on the hunt for what you're going to be doing for math, I just pray that you're able to find some peace for that soon. We have loved Horizons for my oldest daughter, and we've actually stuck with it from the beginning. So um, it's been a blessing for her, and I hope that if you end up going with Horizons as well, it's a blessing for your family too.